the first thing I want to show is um, the ability to clear selected deltas from favorites. So to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and I already selected the vertices, but um, so if you go into edit mode in the parameters pane and go to a morph, and you go select morph vertices, it will select the vertices that are affected by the morph and center on it. Now, if you happen to not have the right tool selected and you run this, it's going to complain. You have to have the geometry editor tool selected. And if you just do that, it'll select nothing still. So you have to make sure to go into the geometry editor first and switch to vertex mode before you go ahead and select the morph vertices. Okay, so let's say you're selecting a morph and you realize that it affects some verts that you didn't want. Maybe it's the hands, the feet, or maybe there are just some other stray ones around here. What you want to do is um, you want to mark the morph as a favorite. And so you can go here and you can see it's there. Um, you can mark it as a favorite. And then select the vertices that you don't want to include. So I'm just going to go ahead and select a bunch of these here. And then right click, morph editing, clear selected deltas from favorites. Now, if I select brow width again, the morph vertices for it, you can see those vertices are not affected anymore. Uh, one nice thing with it doing it based on favorites rather than selected morph is let's say you found that you loaded 20 morphs and all of them affected the feet, but they were all head morphs. You could go through and favorite all the morphs that were a problem. So here I have all these favorited. And then you could just go in and select the feet that were causing the problem. And then you would right click and go to morph editing and clear selected. And then it would remove the feet from all those different morphs. And then of course after you're done, go and save your morphs. Uh, once again to keep your changes. So that's the first cool feature, uh, clearing the, the deltas from the favorited morphs. Uh, the next thing that's uh, pretty fun is in Morph Loader Pro. So I'm going to center on the head. And run Morph Loader Pro. We've got this eye blink left morph that I created. Now, it only affects the left eye, but uh, we have the ability to mirror morphs. So I'm going to right click on morph mirroring. It has X swap. So if I do swap, let's just, we're going to do this multiple times here. Um, so I, I did the swap setting. I'm going to load the same morph again. And this time for morph mirroring, we can do left to right. I'll just name that, and there's no reason to do right to left because we know it's unmorphed. But now, if we load these, we have the left blink swap, so it switched over to the right side, which is very cool. And then left to right, so it brought in the morph plus it mirrored it over to the other side, so you got it on both sides. So, super handy tool there. Now let's say that you actually let's say you um, modeled the blinks together. All right. So instead of mirroring. You're going to want to use this attenuate by option. Let's open this up here. It has a strength and, and edge strength. Uh, let's ignore edge strength for a minute because I actually have no idea what that does. But under attenuate by, you have some options. You can use weight maps to um, determine um, how it's going to split the morph up. Or you can use facet selection. It has all these different groups. 
In this case, what I want to do is split it down the middle. So I'm going to cancel that. And I want to go into the front view. Let's see here. And go into Geometry Editor. Let's go Faces. We'll do a marquee selection. And let's see if we got right down the middle. Looks like we did. So I'm going to save this as, as a selection set. And it's the right side. And you can actually do this, I believe, with vertices as well. So let's just test that. Make a selection set there. All right. So let's just clear our selection so that we're not obstructed at all. And let's run this again. And let's do the eyes blink. So it has both sides on it right now. You can attenuate by. And now it has the vertex selection showing up. Very good. Or the facet selection. So it uses any of those selection sets that you've created. And so I should be able to go in and choose right side. And let's just name this R. And then let's do it again. But this time, I'm going to change the strength to negative 1. Alright, let's run that and see what happens. So we have the eyes blink R, where it's using this right side selection set that I created with the strength of one and the other one strength of negative one. Okay, so let's see. Yep, so it included whatever was in the selection. So I got the R and then by inverting it, we got the left. So that's one way to do that. Now we also have um, yet another option, which is pretty useful and that is using weight maps to split it up now um, let's see if I can find it okay so the weight map can be derived from a deformer which is kinda nice because then I can just load it on the figure whenever I need it and then and then it'll show up on my list and so I'm going to load in a character morph Victoria 7, and I'll attenuate by, oops, I don't have the right thing selected, there we go. Attenuate by, it has, under weight maps has the deformer, influence weights, and this is going to be your head, so let's just call this head, and we'll load it again. This time it'll be body. And again, to invert it, we would do a negative one as our strength. And if we load this, let's go check our morphs. We have Victoria 7 head. It's only the head. And then we have the body. And it's only the body. So you can sculpt your full character together and then use this weight map to split it and then it'll actually match how we split the Daz characters so that they'll blend better uh, because it'll be the exact same splitting. And of course together then you have your combination of Victoria 7.